yeah, well, this is definitely the best I've managed to get my homemade CPU working ever. It's doing really quite a nice thing at the moment. Um, I'm running a program and uh, producing some sort of Knight Rider output. So I'll just talk you through what I've managed to connect up um, so far. So there's, I've got the controller board here with its three decoder EEPROMs. I've got the program memory down here in my manually programmable ROM. So that's a 16 byte ROM. I just put that on so I can program, stick a program in really, really quickly without having to mess about. Um, it's not actually part of the CPU, it's just for storing the program in. Um, this is the board where I've got three of the registers. So I've got the A register, the X register, and the Y register. I'm only using the A for this one. And over here, I've got the ALU, which does the, well, in this case, doing a rotate left and a rotate right instruction. Now I've got the clock running at, um, well, that we can find out what I've got the clock running at because I've got it connected up to my multimeter measuring the frequency. So I've got the clock running at about 26 hertz at the moment, 27 hertz. And that is giving a, a kind of a decent kind of speed. Okay, so we're running about 27 hertz at the moment. And I've got just out of shot over on the right hand side here, I've got the uh, clock speed control. So if we turn this up, we can go, where are we now? 33, 40 hertz, uh, eight, ooh. Ah, so at about 200 hertz, somewhere around 200 hertz, I think the Knight Rider effect is at about its best. Let's cast a shadow over that, there you go. Yeah, it's probably about its best there. So I can easily run at 250 hertz, and um, I can change the clock to a bit faster by changing the one of the settings on my square wave generator. Um, so now I'm running at 1.7 kilohertz. And so you can't see any Knight Rider because it's just going so fast, you just see a bit of a flicker. Um, and is that about the fact? Ooh. Three, so four, getting on for four kilohertz. So that's the maximum my clock I'm running off a 555 square wave generator, it's the maximum it can do. And if we turn it down, you get back into, there we go, back into Knight Rider territory uh, at about 200 kilohertz. You can see it, it's working. Okay, so manual clock, manual clock mode is on and the program counters at the back here. So 12 is the current location in the program counter, so that's somewhere down here. Um, zero over on this decimal display is just showing you what's currently on the data bus. Um, and this is the instruction register here. So I'm going to fetch the next instruction into this instruction register, decode it, and then execute it on the rest of the system. So we're performing the CPU fetch, decode, and execute cycle. So with the program counter set to 15 at the back here, it's the, um, the program counter is about to roll around to address zero because it's only a four bit program counter. So it gets up to 15 and goes back to zero. Let's see if we can single step through the instructions. So the very first instruction is a one, uh, which is a load A with immediate, and the immediate value comes in the byte after it, which is set to three. So what we should see as we go to, as I single step it through and we go to instruction zero, we're gonna fetch um, the value of one into the instruction register. So we've got one in the instruction register, and that um, then tells the program counter to increase by one. So this bit, bit here has been decoded and these values here have been decoded. Um, so we're publishing from one, which is memory and storing it in the instruction register. So that's pulled that and we're going to increase the program counter. We go on to instruction, well, memory location one, and we're going to pull a value of three. And this time we're going to store that value in the accumulator. So that's what's happened here. Then we're going to move on to instruction two. Uh, which we've pulled in there, we've fetched instruction two, uh, location two, which is 15, and that is a rotate left instruction. So we are going to try and rotate this value here, left. And the way that that's done is, uh, you can see it's decoding other things here, so it's going to take the value in the accumulator and it's going to send it through to the ALU. So there we go, so we've sent a three through to the ALU, um, we're now going to select in this middle ROM, this is the ALU decoding ROM, this is going to select the settings that you need for an add A to A, well add input A to input A. 
adding a to a is the same as rotating a left. So we've started off with three and now we've moved up to a value of six. And then it's going to transfer that value on the next clock cycle. It's going to transfer that back into the accumulator. So the accumulator gets a six. And the next instruction, we're going to move on now because um, we've finished all that lot. We're going to move on to four, which is going to get us the next um, instruction which is the same instruction again, it's a rotate left, and it's going to repeat that process. It's going to send that over to the value in A over to the ALU. It's going to add it to itself to double it and transfer it back again. So all maths is done by the ALU. If you've got a value in a register and you want to get something done to it, you send it to the ALU, get the ALU to do the function that you need, and then bring it back. And as we carry on, I've put rotate lefts all the way in these memory locations here. We're going to keep fetching rotate left and move our well we've got two bits in there so we're going to move those along they're going to hit against the end and uh, now we've, we've reached here location eight which is a rotate right so we've pulled in the value for rotate right and there's a little bit of a trick with rotate right so what i do is i move things into the alu but i move them in in uh, reversed round mode so we've got two bits over on the left, we move it over to two bits over on the right. And the reason for this is that this ALU doesn't have a rotate right, it only has a rotate left. So what I decided to do was take all the bits, flip them over, rotate them left, then flip them back again, which comes out exactly the same as flipping them to the right. It seems like a bit of overkill, but it seems like the easiest way to do it, because then all the things like carry and everything work exactly the same way with rotate left and rotate right. So the bits are here, they then get rotated. Um, so they've been rotated to the left, sent to here, flipped back again, and then that will get sent back out to A. And so that's our rotate right instruction. So if we step through those, we'll see those bits step down to the right. What have I got? So I've got a load of rotates to the right, and then I've got two knop instructions at the end. So let's shove a couple of, in fact, let's stick a different value in. Let's stick couple of bits uh, let's oh, let's turn all the bits on so we'll load up a 255 and this one let's put it to rotate left okay I think that was out of shot but anyway I'm just changing the program around a little bit so that the last two instructions after we're going to rotate right for a little while and then we're going to load the one a value of two, 255 so all the bits on into the accumulator so we'll keep pulling those rotate rights, and have we got another one to go? No, and now we've pulled, uh, we've fetched a load A, and then we've fetched a 255 into here, and then we'll go back to the top of the program, zero, where I've now got uh, just rotate um, left in there. So we'll start seeing the, the value start to rotate left. So when you rotate left, this kind of rotate left that I've got just puts a zero in one end and the overflow just gets thrown away. There's not even any storing of the carry at the moment because I haven't implemented a carry flag. So we're rotating left. Uh, we'll rotate that right down there. And, oh, I've rotated it right out the end. So there's nothing left to see. Hmm. 